Hi there! Here is Marzena and this is my fourth doll customizing project. And I have to say, it will be my last one here. I mean here, at this workshop. Our new apartment is almost ready and my back is killing me and my provisional workspace. So I decided that I will wait for my new workshop and let my spine rest a bit. Not to mention the lighting here is really crappy. But today we are still here and I want to show you my latest doll. And what could she be? Yes, a Valentine's project. So what are you thinking? Love? Cuteness? Heart-shaped candy? Warm emotion? Softness? Maybe pink? Nope! Guess again! I really wanted to make a little twist this time, so it won't be cute, it won't be lovely. It will be dark and creepy. So if you don't like horror and more gory art, maybe you shouldn't be watching this one. But you have to forgive me. My main profession is being FX makeup artist, so I just need some gore and guts in my life from time to time. Well, I hope you will like it anyway. I even came up with a simple story behind this doll. So let's start and I will tell you about it. So her story is that she was just a girl whose heart was broken by someone she truly loved. She was in such a pain that on Valentine's night she decided to perform a magic ritual. She found it in an old spell book that she came across and was supposed to help her get rid of her broken heart and the heartache that she suffered from. But instead of just mending her broken heart, she summoned a demon that literally ripped her heart out. So be careful what you wish for. So with this project I decided to make her levitate over a magic circle with a demon's hand sticking out of her chest. And because I'm a masochist, I really wanted to make candles in the circle glowing like they are real. Well, maybe not really real, but with LED lights, which I never did before. So, new stuff, guys! I wanted my figurine to be a little greyish, unhealthy looking even. So my first thoughts went to Frankenstein, cause I have plenty of them in my stock box. But to be completely honest, I'm not really in love in her face sculpt. Maybe it's because of her jaw? Her face looks a little too baby-like. Then I thought about Rochelle Goyle, and I can definitely say that her face is gorgeous. She does even have this sad-looking, frowny expression sculpted on. While Frankie is just... flat. So Rochelle it is then. Rochelle is a gargoyle, so her plastic and vinyl is stained with uh, tiny spots to create a granite-like texture. So I needed to pick one with the most delicate pattern. And I think that this one will do the trick. So, we have our winner! Let's get this party started! To prepare the doll for customization, I removed her hair by cutting it really short. And then submerged the head in a boiling water for a minute or two. It's gonna soften the vinyl and melt the glue that's inside. Now I can remove the head without destroying the neck pack. I had a one problem here, but a very tiny one. I removed the yucky hair plugs and the glue from the doll's head. My favorite part. Then, using pure acetone, I removed a factory paint from the head and I wiped the rest of the doll with non-acetone nail polish remover. Monster High dolls have and proportionally big heads, so I decided to use a shrinking method once again. 
I immersed the head in a big jar with acetone, marinated it for 2 hours and then let it dry for 24 hours. I repeated the process twice. This time I attached the head before it fully dried, so I only needed to trim the neck peg a little and I didn't need to wider the neck hole. The shrieking went great. She looks even more pretty. And you definitely can see how smaller she is. I sanded the body to create a better grip for Mr. Super Clear. As you can see, I was working on my computer desk a lot this time, because my workshop is messing with my back. I removed her ears and I was pleasantly surprised that there were no holes left. At first I wanted to create new ears out of the old ones, but the vinyl is not a material that is easy to curving. So I dig through my spare parts dolls and found this Duchess Swan from Ever After High. At least I think it's her. Her neck was totally destroyed, so I don't think she would mind a little ear transplant donation. I cut the ears just a little for better fitting and glued them on with super glue. With micromotor and tiny milling cutters, I opened her mouth a little bit. With a bigger cutter, I sanded down the plastic seams, joints and panties. After cleaning with soap and water, I sprayed her with three layers of MSC and wrapped her like a cute burrito. I started by painting the ears grey. Didn't pick the perfect shade, but I will match it later with soft pastels. I used yellows and pinks in skin-like shades to make her look greyish, but not completely grey. I used reds on the ears, nose and lips. Deepened the shadows with browns. I am really sorry that her face is constantly running away from the frame. I am really pissed at myself for not checking my camera more often while working. After sketching the main features with brown pencil, I could start adding more colors and details. I gave her green eyes and made her look up. Of course I added red to her water lines. And I spilled the beer. Guys, don't drink while you are working. Back to her face. I added more and more details and wrinkles. Darken the lip corners. She was a little bit too smiley, so I gave her a very sad looking eyebrows. Added some yellow tones to the irises and started working with black. Turning a doll upside down helps me to work on her right eye. I was planning to give her a black hair, so I darkened the brows more.
added some highlights. And some shadows. I gave her a pink cheeks to make her look a little, I don't know, innocent. And I could switch to acrylic paints. I started with irises and then painted the pupils. I don't know why, but I feel like with my every repaint, the right pupil is always smaller than the left one. With my finest brush, I painted the lashes. And let's get crazy with the light spots. Painting white lashes didn't go right this time. I think that I just painted too many of them. So I did everything to cover this mistake. And the face up was quite finished. I don't own a 3D printer, so I decided to sculpt the demon hand using a dental wax on a wire skeleton. Uh. That is why I hate working with wire. Screw the skeleton. I decided that one piece of thick wire will be just enough. I used Renford electric wax knife and a grey dental modeling wax to create the hand drop by drop. This is the same method that dental technicians are using while creating prosthetic restoration. I thought that it will be a nice opportunity to practice. As you can see, the wax is curing really fast and you can create a lot of cool stuff with it. Not only teeth. Then I only needed to smooth it a little with fine and sharp curving instrument. And the hand sculpt is finished. Pretty cool, don't you think? Using the same technique, I created the candles. <laughs> candles, I swear I was making candles. And here they are completed. 
the wax sculptures were only for making molds, of course. So let's start with that. I used this amazingly handy tape that I discovered at my work. It is a special tape for making a small sized silicon molds, so just perfect. You just need to remove the protection stripe, connect two ends together, put it on a thin foil and press the foil to the sticky tape. Super easy! I used two parts silicon, measured equal amount of A and B, mixed them gently to avoid creating air bubbles, and pured it from a great high with a very thin stream. I place the candles one by one in a small mixing cup and repeat the silicon procedure. After silicon cured, I removed the wax sculptures from the molds. It was way harder to do with the hand, so I cut a mold in two pieces to get an easier access. Now I could prepare the resin. I used a small syringe for perfect measuring and mixed the resin and the catalyst in 2 to 1 proportion. Then drop by drop I poured the resin to the molds. When I filled the fingers holes I reattached the demon hand mold pieces and secured them with silver tape. Then I filled the mold completely, tapping it repeatedly to release as many air bubbles as possible. After 24 hours the resin got thick enough to place the LED lights in the candles. I checked them first and then sunk them in the resin. I still needed to hold them in place though. After two more days, I could finally remove the resin from the molds. The candles turned out quite good. The hand, on the other hand, did not. So I decided to cast it one more time, but first cut through the mold to make a better access to the fingers. With just a kitchen sponge and my resin LED candles, I made a second mold. Now I was able to cast eight candles at one go. Back to my workshop. This time I used a round box as a doll stand, because I wanted to hide the cables and the battery holder inside. Once again I tested all of my LED and finally I was ready to start. I never played with LED, so I had no clue what to do. But my friend came by to show me how to start. Thank you Michał. You are a butt savior. So I just needed to repeat what he showed me and it was supposed to be fine. I drilled the holes for the candles and got to soldering.
Every LED light has two legs, longer, anode, which means plus, and shorter, cathode, which means minus. All I needed to do is connect pluses with pluses and minuses with minuses. Easy, right? Yeah, I'm a pro. After this first success, it went just smooth as a butter. Ja to jestem jakoś do straszna. Czemu znowu to nie działa? Krzysiu, ja nie umiem tego robić. No no ten układ. Cały czas coś d***a, nie wiem co. No jak znowu będzie coś nie tak, to ja się poddaję. Demet. No. Aha! Nie bardzo wiem, w czym jest problem. Ach. No! Co się gdzieś nie styka. O, to jest jakiś dowcip. Już wiem, że tego nie cierpię. I did this compilation of rage and desperation for you to know that crafting is hard and learning new stuff is hard and not every try will be a success. It is just so, so important to not give up and keep on trying. So, after I literally cried my eyes out, I called it a so-so success and skipped to the next stage, which is decorating the stand with pavements from EVA foam. I smoothed the edges of the EVA elements with Dremel, marked their places on the stand, closed the foam pores with heat gun, and glued them to the stand with a contact cement. I smeared the glue on both pieces that I wanted to be attached to each other, let the glue evaporate for a bit, and then stuck the pieces together. That's how the contact cement works. I also glued few pieces of EVA inside the stand. One thick in the middle, to secure the doll attachment in the future and two thinner ones on two sides of the lid so the doll weight won't force the lid to open, if you know what I mean. I glued the thick wire to the middle of the stand and marked the magic circle. I covered the candle's lights with masking tape, added some hot glue to imitate a melted wax and sprayed the whole piece three times with a black spray paint. I painted the stand and the candles with acrylics. Added some highlights and a red pentagram. I drilled a big cavity in a doll's chest and an attachment hole in one of her feet. At last I could glue her in her pose. With the doll attached to the stand I could cover all the joints that will be visible with air drying clay. I made a chest wound with epoxy skull. With a white warbler pearly art, I created an ethereal shirt. I was eyeballing everything because who needs patterns, am I right?
The shirt was almost ready. It just needed some buttons. For that I used some tiny gemstones that I just glued on with a super glue. Then I painted the joints, the chest wound and the shirt with acrylics. I used dry brush technique to add some shadows to the shirt. Now she needed the panties. Added some red to the wound and started with the black strips. I tried few different tools to create the streams as precise as needed, but they all turned out too thick. Especially on her face it was a nightmare to get it nice and thin. Finally I discovered the toothpick. I even decided to try wiping the body off and do it again with a toothpick. And I don't regret that decision at all. I added some gloss to her eyes and lips and tried to create wet tears running down her cheeks. It's time for some hair. I created a weft from black acrylic yarn and I glued them piece by piece to a doll's head with a hot glue. I trimmed the hair just a little and sprayed the hairstyle with a gallon of hairspray. With few scraps of warbler I created the spell book and painted it with acrylics and with a golden ink. I sculpted the heart from polymer clay and baked it in the oven before painting it. I watered down few drops of black ink and I used it to dye small pieces of cotton for an experiment. Then I brushed them gently after they dried. Here is my second hand cast painted black and it is a big improvement. Almost everything is in its place now. With hot glue I created some gooey dripping and painted them black. Added some paint to the tears. attach the cotton smoke. I even fixed my faulty connection in the battery pack and now it is finally working as it should. Because it didn't before. And my fourth project is complete. So, here it is, my dark valentines. I am so freakishly happy about how she turned out. She is just like I imagined. Well, um, the smoke was supposed to be lit up from the inside, that is why there is an LED hidden inside the box, but I don't care. 
I am happy anyway. And despite all of the problems I faced here, the LED circuit, the casting failure, I didn't give up and I finished her. I couldn't be more proud of myself. It was my first ever resin casting and working with lights and I nailed it. Well, eventually. What do you think about my Twisted Valentine's project? Do you like a little darker approach in a doll customization? Or do you prefer cute and sweet dolls? Please, share with me your opinions and thoughts in a comment section down below. I hope that this video showed you that making a project from start to finish is a bumpy road. And it is a normal, at, at least for me, to be frustrated and even despairing. It is a love-hate relationship between me and my art, trust me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you would like to see more, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I wish you all to keep your heart in its right place. Thank you all for watching and see you soon! Kiedy wsadzisz kota w kołnierz, żeby się nie wylizywał. Przepraszam.